Yes, good morning, children. So today, the new chapter we are going to start, the sermon at Benares. So before we read the chapter, we are going to discuss a few things. First of all, let's see like what a sermon is. What's a sermon? Sermon is, is a religious lecture. It's a talk on religion. It's a talk on values and ethics. Okay. It's just not about religion. It's more on principles, ethics, and values, which the human beings should, you know, adhere to. It's about the values for mankind, not only about religion. So whenever you hear or any person, uh, any religious person talking about values and ethics, that's a sermon. So it's a talk on religion. It's a talk on values, principles, and ethics. Uh, yes, some people uh, say that uh, some people make fun of this word sermon. It can be used in a humorous manner also. Like, for example, my mother uh, might give a sermon on uh, getting more marks. Uh, so, so here you can use this expression as a, in a humorous manner also because uh, sermon is like a, basically it's a religious talk or a talk on principal ethics and values, but it can be humorously used as well. For example, my teacher uh, will keep on giving ser giving sermons on uh, discipline, values, and all. So it's being used humorously, right? So then let's talk about the ben uh, sermon at Benares. So the writer is asking us, like, have you ever heard about the sermon on the mount? Have you ever heard about this? The sermon on the mount? So children, this very sermon on the mount, sermon I've told you, it's a talk on values and ethics. So, Sermon on Mount was given by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave the Sermon on Mount to his disciples about, about the values of life or about whatever. So, then the Sermon at Benares was given by Gautam Buddha. So, in this chapter, we are going to read about what Gautam Buddha said, what his uh, uh, principle of life was. Okay. So let us talk about like what was uh, who gave this sermon on sermon at Benares? It was given by Gautam Buddha to a woman, the one who who uh, who lost her son, and that woman wanted that Gautam Buddha should revive her son, and uh, she brought her dead body. She brought the dead body of her son to Gautam Buddha and wanted that he should revive that her son. So Gautam Buddha said, okay, he would do that. But first she had to bring some mustard seeds uh, from a house where no death had taken place. The woman agreed and she went from one place to another. She went home to home uh, and uh, she was not able to find a single house where there had not been any death. So she came back to, the, uh, to Buddha and uh, told him the reality. So... Through this incident, Gautam Buddha was able to teach the woman the lesson that man is mortal, right? Man is mortal. It means what? Like anyone who is born is destined to die one day. Life cannot be like permanent. One, if one is, you know, if one life is there, it will come to an end one day. So whatever is there, it will always diminish. It will always decay. So death is a law of nature. And one, after death will be the birth. So that is a circle that see, you know, uh, law of nature and it, it will be so. So there is no need for one to become too much attached with this life. Uh, but that also doesn't mean that one should become, uh, one should denounce the life like uh, many people do. So the point is live your life to the fullest, but at the same time, do the good things because you are, uh, your life will come to an end one or the other day. So the sermon at Benares was given by Gautam Buddha upon the fact like death is imminent. Death will come one day or the other. So you cannot belie the fact like, like that death is imminent. It will come and uh, one must be ready for it. And it should not, uh, yes, death makes us sad, but acceptance is the only solution, right? So let's read out this story in brief, in uh, details. So Gautam Buddha, so first we are going to read about the Gautam Buddha's early life, okay? So first paragraph is about his early life. 
so let's see so gautam buddha he began life as a prince named siddharth gautam in nadra nadia at 12 he was sent away for schooling in the hindu sacred scriptures and 4 years later he returned home to marry a princess got it so he was his uh, full name in the beginning as a child was siddharth gautam in nadra nadia at the age of 12 he was sent away for schooling in the hindu sacred scriptures and 4 years later so he studied for 4 years and afterwards he came back home and he married a princess they had a son and lived for 10 years as befitted royalty so gautam buddha he got married got a son and lived a happy life as a king as a royal princess for about 10 years at about the age of 25 the prince here to for shielded from the sufferings of the world while out hunting chanced upon a sick man then an aged man then a funeral procession and finally a monk begging for alms so this prince at the age of 25 this prince gautam siddharth gautam you know uh, till the age of 26 he had not seen any uh, you know uh, any problem in the world he had not encountered any death he had not encountered any misery or any problem no poverty he, because he had been living in the palace for only 4 years he was out for education and afterwards he had been in the palace so he never ever saw like what actually the life is and once he went out for hunting at the age of 26 and then he happened to see different things about life what he saw he saw a ma- sick man then he saw an aged man then he saw uh, a funeral procession you understand funeral procession where uh, people were taking a dead body to for procession funeral and finally a monk begging for alms finally he saw somebody who was begging for alms so these sights so moved him that he at once went out into the world to seek enlightenment so these sights of the old man or of the suffering or of the death these sights of so many uh, you know uh, with a different you know uh, point of views he he was so touched he was so moved that he went out to seek enlightenment so what is enlightenment a state of high spiritual knowledge concerning the sorrows concerning the sorrows he had witnessed he wandered for seven years and finally sat down under a peepal tree where he bowed not so to stay until enlightenment came so finally for seven years he kept on wandering from one place to another and finally uh he sat under a peepal tree and he uh decided not to move until he had got enlightenment okay enlightenment after 7 days he renamed the tree enlightened after 7 days he renamed the tree the bodhi so he got enlightenment under that very peepal tree and named that tree as bodhi bodhi tree free uh, tree of wisdom bodhi word has come from the word buddh buddh buddhi buddhi means wisdom hindi word buddhi and from there they we got the word as bodhi the tree of wisdom and began to teach and to share his new understandings so what is enlightenment children enlightenment is spiritual knowledge when you gain that uh, when you are able to have that communion with god and you are able to seek that seek the reality when you are able to know like what the reality is okay when you are able to shun your uh, uh, you know uh, ignorance and when you gain ultimate knowledge that is enlightenment so un- when he got that enlightenment he sa- he renamed that tree as bodhi and he began to teach and share his new understandings at that point he became known as the buddha the awakened or the enlightened so buddha means the awakened and an enlightened soul so at, it was at this point of time that he got to be known as gautam buddha the buddha preached his first sermon at the city of banaras most holy of the dipping places on the river ganges or gange so he gave his first sermon at the city of uh, banaras which is considered as the holiest place uh, near ganga that sermon has been preserved and is given here 
it reflects the buddha's wisdom about one inscrutable kind of suffering so this very sermon which he get, gave at that city of banaras that is being preserved and it speaks it shows buddha's wisdom about one inscrutable kind of suffering what is inscrutable something which cannot be understood so he it shows his wisdom about the most difficult kind of suffering so kiza gautami had an only son so we are going to read what that sermon was so here it is kiza gautami had an only son and he died in her grief she carried the dead child to her all neighbors asking them for medicine and the poor and the people said she has lost her senses the boy is dead so what happened kiza gautami the one who lost her only son uh, in her grief when she was in ex extreme grief she carried the dead body of her son and uh, and uh, asked her neighbors to give some medicine for her son and the people said like because she had lost her son so she had become mad okay at length pisa got me met a man who replied to her request i cannot give thee medicine for thy child but i know a physician who can so finally pisa met a man the one who uh, talked to her a bit sensibly so he told her like he cannot give her son a medicine but he can recommend a doctor for her and the girl said pray tell me sir who is he who is it so pray me please tell me so please tell me who that person is and the man replied go to uh, sakya muni the buddha so the man uh, referred him to referred her to buddha kiza got me repaired to the buddha so here repair doesn't mean that she repaired him it only means she went to him okay so she went to buddha uh, children why has this kind of language been used earlier the writer was saying like uh, uh, that woman earlier somebody said like i uh, i cannot give the medicine for thy child the means you and thy means your why has this kind of language been used because it's an archaic it's an old styled language and because it uh, this this sermon has been taken from an old book so the style of the language at that time whatever it was so that has been written over here so then here then uh, he says the buddha answered kiza got me repaired to buddha and cried lord and master give me the medicine that will cure my boy the buddha answered i want a handful of mustard seeds and when the girl in her joy promised to procure it the buddha added the mustard seed must be taken from a house where no one has lost a child husband parent or friend so he said like i want mustard seeds from the kind of house where no death has taken place poor kiza gotami now went from house to house and the people pitied her and said here is mustard seed take it but when she said did a son or a daughter or a father or a mother die in your family they answered her alas the living are few but the dead are many do not remind us of our deepest grief and there was no house but some beloved one had died, died in it so wherever this woman went to ask for the mustard seeds she was given but there was not even a single house where there had not been any death so they said like the people those who are alive are less but the people those who had already died are more so pisa got me became weary and hopeless and sat down at the wayside watching the lights of the city as it flickered up and were extinguished again so pisa got me who got very tired and uh, finally she became hopeless and then she sat uh, uh, wayside started watching the lights so the lights were flickering up and were flickering and were getting extinguished again they were lighting up and were getting extinguished at last the darkness of the night reigned everywhere so what is the symbolic of light up then light goes and then finally total darkness so light up means birth of the person and a flickering of the light means a life becomes staggered and finally when the light is extinguished means a death and finally total darkness means a, the after death nothing so at last the darkness of the night reigned everywhere and she considered the fate of men 
and their lives flicker up and are extinguished again and she thought to herself so that uh, incident when she saw the lights going up and down that gave her the lesson of life that this is true with the life of man like the man takes birth and dies and takes birth again so and she thought to herself how selfish am i in my grief death is common to all uh so she said like pizza got me uh you can send the message to me in case somebody has to say something one can send me the message okay okay uh so poor pizza uh, so finally she talked to herself like how selfish am i in my grief death is common to all yet in this valley of desolation there is path that leads him to immortality who has surrendered all selfishness so she thought like she she got to realize that she had been very selfish in her grief but the fact is that death is common to all it was not that that she had only experienced death of herself basically the fact was like everybody experiences a death in one or the other form yet in this valley of desolation there is a path that leads him to immortality who has surrendered all selfishness but yes if death is inevitable if death is a, a reality in the end then one day the fact is that uh, even in this valley of death there is a hope what is that hope if somebody had been very selfless if somebody had been self, if somebody had been able to give up all uh, mundane issues and selfishnesses then one can get immortality what is immortality immortality is uh, getting rid of the cycle of birth and death okay when you uh, when you take birth and when you die then afterwards when you don't take birth back it is immortality so immortality is the only hope of life and immortality comes when we are selfless so the buddha said the life of mortals in this world is troubled and brief so what did buddha say the life of mortals in this world is troubled and brief and combined with pain it's a very important thing and that's a fact also so life is very uh, life is number one limited so one uh, when one takes life birth that person will die that is for sure so life span is limited number 2 within this life span one one always has to struggle there cannot be a single person who says that he doesn't have to struggle each and everybody has to struggle right from the time of birth and so it is troubled brief and combined with pain for there is not any means by which those that have been born can avoid dying so you cannot avoid death after reaching old age there is death of such a nature are living beings so the reality is that when one becomes old one will die so you cannot avoid death as ripe fruits are early in danger as ripe fruits are early in danger of falling so ripe fruits are early in danger of falling means when the fruit becomes ripe they fall similarly it's a law of nature that the when man becomes ripened then when man becomes old he will die so mortals when born are always in danger of death so as soon as somebody is born that person is in danger of death so you cannot predict that when will somebody die it's not a sure sure to that the person will die only in the old age so that is not defined because man is born after one has become ripened okay so birth takes place after the after after that very child is fully formed and after one is born that is imminent as all earthen vessels made by the potter and in being broken so when the earthen when the potter you know potter makes the earthen vessels and those earthen vessels break one day or the other you cannot say like some earthen pot will remain there forever it's not possible so is the life of mortals both young and adult both those who are fools and those who are wise all fall into the power of death all are subject to death so everybody whether somebody is poor or rich 
intelligent or weak so everybody will die all are subject to death of those who overcome by death of those who overcome by death depart from life a father a father cannot save his son nor kinsmen their relations mark while relatives are looking on and lamenting deeply one by one mortals are carried off like an ox that is led to the slaughter so the world is afflicted with death and decay therefore the wise do not grieve knowing the terms of the world so point is like those of, of those who overcome by death what do you mean by overcome by death means when the death you know makes you very sad what happens to those depart from life so the when people are too much shocked by the death of somebody else they you know take a uh, they depart from life depart from life means they uh, they don't accept life as it is then for example this very old woman the one who lost her son she refused to accept the life because she had embraced death because of her shock a father cannot save his son so no one can save anyone death is imminent it is you know it comes to all and you no one can save anyone nor father can save his son kinsmen relatives cannot save their relatives so while relatives are looking on and lamenting deeply one by one mortals are carried off so when you are uh, lamenting the death of the other person then the death is doing its job so the world is full of death the world is afflicted with you know the world is you know affected by sufferings death and decay so therefore the wise people don't keep on grieving at the loss okay they accept it they accept the terms of the world not from weeping nor from grieving will anyone obtain peace of mind so how to get peace of mind then if death is imminent if death will come if it is law of nature then how to accept it point is this because it, it is not easy to accept the reality of death like that then what see the point is like you cannot get peace of mind by weeping one cannot get peace of mind by uh, by remaining grief stricken on the contrary his pain will be greater and his body will suffer so keeping on crying and keep on getting grief stricken that will weaken the body and your pain will be increased he will make himself sick and pale yet the dead are not saved by his lamentation he who seeks peace should draw out the arrow of lamentation and complaint and grief so he who seeks peace should draw out the arrow of lamentation complaint and grief so those who want peace they must limit their grief they must draw a line okay the grief should be celebrated to some extent don't keep on crying don't keep on then what to do accept he who has drawn out of the arrow and has become composed so he who has drawn out the arrow and has become composed will obtain peace of mind so how to get peace of mind number 1 uh, delimiting like uh, drawing a limit okay and when you come out of uh, when you are able to accept the things then peace of mind will become and he who has overcome all sorrow will become free from sorrow and be blessed so how to be how to overcome sorrow when you when you overcome the sorrow on your own with your own will power with your own acceptance and when you are away from the sorrow when you are able to overcome your sorrow and grief and have accepted the things then only you feel that you are blessed otherwise there is nothing that can make you happy so that is how we have finished the chapter just in one go today i wonder like for the first time in my life i have finished one chapter in one go because it was a very serious kinds of chapter and very short